This is the Your Dollars Making Sense podcast, brought to you by Jamie Blanton with Jacob Title, Bales Property Management and Home Building, SHH Mechanical, Boyle's Tax Service, Coleman Appliance Repair, 412 Pub House, Anytime Fitness, and Cotton Home Inspections. Hey everybody, Richard Nice here with Your Dollars Making Sense. We believe that financial intelligence is the key to financial freedom. If this is your first time listening, we appreciate you guys, whether you're listening on Spotify, Our Heart Radio, WKUL, we appreciate every one of you. Thank you for following us. You know, like us on Instagram, Facebook. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Richard Nice. I'm a local real estate broker here in North Alabama, and I started Your Dollars Making Sense. Uh, it's been about three months ago now, because I kept in, in, incurring this same problem. People would call me. It was not really a problem. People would call me and they'd say, hey, Richard, let's have lunch. Let's have breakfast. Let's talk about investing in general. Now, of course, most of them were geared towards uh, real estate investing, but I kept coming across the same problems over and over again. Uh, and, and folks want to get into investing without having that financial intelligence, that, that baseline. So I decided to start a radio show. Um, so we started about, like I said, three months ago. We try to bring on special guests. Today, our special guest is Chris Mann. You'll say hey to everybody, Chris. Hello there. Uh, let them know what you do, Chris, who you work for, what you do, um, because you are one of the experts for sure. Okay, great. Glad to be here. Uh, again, my name is Chris Mann. I am with Edward Jones. Uh, it's a fairly large company, but what's unique about Edward Jones is that each individual office is a business center. So it's really grassroots. Uh, so we got a lot of support coming from our home office, uh, but we're really in touch with the community. So, so Chris, we, we started working together, talking. I, I got to know you, met you about four years ago when I was starting in real estate. What led you to being a, um, a financial advisor? Well, there's a little history. I don't want to bore you on that, uh, but... So it started out with uh, 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 with my father. Uh, Rod Mann has been a financial advisor um, with Edward Jones for over 25 years. Uh, grew up in Coleman. I'll back up a little bit. So I, I've kind of lived vicariously the industry through him when he started that career. Yeah. Uh, but I went off and did my thing. I lived in Atlanta for 20 years. I was a professional engineer. Nice. Um, then decided uh, there was a, a, a good time to transition. So I came back home, came, come back to live in Coleman, uh, get back into, uh, the, the, my roots here. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and I started with Edward Jones. Uh, so that's, that was a, um, that was a beginning point. Uh, I was sitting in the same office with Rod for a few years. I'm now in a different office. Uh, and that's actually over on fifth street. Okay. Um, and, uh, that's, that was as, as of January. So that was that's a, pretty a interesting. Thing. I mean, I know that, um, obviously being a PE, uh, you're going to be good with numbers and dealing with that. Uh, and then the background kind of tied into that, but, but kind of taking up the family business. Um, what led you to do that? Uh, well, I saw what was happening and, and the value that, that my father brought to people yeah. through Edward Jones. Um, just being able to, uh, there's a culture of right. Edward Jones, and a lot of it is focus on the client, making sure you're doing what's best for the client, uh, listening to the client, uh, and also uh, being able to to work with folks that do have serious long-term investment goals and desires, and that if there's ways we add value, um, there's a there's mechanisms and there's all kinds sure. of support that I could see even from the very beginning that this is not your typical company where right. it's just trying to sell a product. It's well, more of trying to listen to the client and find what's right. You know, having the, the family business as well as having the, the, the backing of the, the larger company, I mean, that there's definitely value in that. And interesting enough, I work for Weikert Realtors. Uh, so people ask me all the time, why don't you start your own company? Well, it's because of the resources that help make my customers, um, help me provide better service for my customers. So you get that local feel plus the, the bigger resource uh, pool, which which is huge. I know in a lot of uh, real estate companies, they struggle between those two. And, and, you know, in our real estate company, <clears throat> my personal slogan is helping good people get to a better place. And you, you definitely hit on that. You know, you're, you've got folks right now that are working hard. Well, they're professionals, farmers, you know, uh, trying to make ends meet. That they're looking at what's in front of them, and what you're telling me is you want to help them long term plan that out so they can reach a retirement or a, a certain level of comfort and living. Is that what you're telling me? Right, and it's not tied to a certain 
um, as net assets or, right. or what you're worth. It's more about uh, working hard, like you said, um, in your career, in your profession, but having those long-term That's goals right. at different levels. Yeah, do what um, you do well, and we'll help you with the rest. So, right, right. And that's that's a great uh, great philosophy, great theory on that. I know that you guys are helping folks daily. Um, so tell me, tell me kind of what that process is like. Um, so I, I call you, uh, first off, I, I'm listening to this podcast. It's a great podcast uh, called Your Dollars Making Sense. And I hear your name. You give out your information. How do they get a hold of you? What's your phone number? Okay, my phone number is 256 256- Seven seven five nine seven two two. So I call that number. I, I'm going to talk to the, your assistant, your secretary, and then she's mm-hmm. going to set up an appointment. Right. So, so what do I need, or do I just show up? How does that process work as a whole? Well, sometimes people do just show up, um, but it's nice to be prepared somewhat. That helps the the conversation flow and and be more productive. Sure. Uh, a lot of a lot of times history would be so if you are in a four hundred one k. Um, we want to understand what that looks like as far as what, what have you been doing so far? Right. Uh, and if you've got, do you have life insurance? Do you have annuities or any kind of a, if you've got existing investments that or that planning that you've done, we want to understand what that is sure. because the first thing we're going to do is start asking you questions. We want to listen. That's the first thing we want to do is ask questions and listen. Um, and then if there's some structuring or some goal setting, we layer that in as as we're able to to peel back sure. what you're truly trying to do or what your long term goals are. So I'm glad you're hitting on that. Most of the time, and I kind of jumped into your segment. Most of the time, the first segment we talk about the most important thing, which is knowing where you're going, because it doesn't matter. I can come in with all sorts of assets and uh, different retirement things, but if I don't know where I'm going or what lifestyle I want to live in retirement or you know whatever that looks like. How can I ever get there? I mean, it's like a ship setting sail and not knowing what port it's going to. It doesn't matter how great the ship is, it's never going to get there. Uh, so I'm glad you talked about that. That's the first thing that I always tell folks is what do you want to do? You want to live in a tiny home in the middle of, of the woods uh, and have minimal uh, ties to any bills or anything like that? Well, that's fine. That's your lifestyle, but you're not going to have to have $2 million in the bank to live off of that. I wouldn't imagine. Uh, or do you want to have... Uh, you know, three lake houses, and, and you want to travel. I know, uh, I know, you do a good bit of traveling yourself, which I, I see on Instagram all the time. Man, I, I, going to watch the, the football games and all that stuff. If you want to live that lifestyle, I imagine you need a little bit more um, passive income or or things like that. So, how do you get to that point, or how does that discussion go when you're talking about long term planning? Well, we we start out very basic is we want to understand risk. So we'll go through a risk tolerance questionnaire to under to to help. And sometimes the the client or the prospect doesn't really understand that and hadn't really thought about it much. Right. But when we Absolutely. dig into those questions, questions, yeah, I mean, and it forces them to, oh, yeah, okay. So we, we get an idea of, of how much could you live with market volatility yeah. uh, or the ups and downs, the roller coaster. Does that turn your stomach as far as is it just yeah. turn, give you? Um, Are you going to be fits? watching your account every day, right. worried about losing seventy dollars or something like that? Right. I get it. Yeah. Or, or can you let the roller coaster ride not affect you? Not necessarily, you don't want to disregard or look away, sure. but thinking long term. Uh, so we'll go through that process. We will ask questions for, for short term, like you know, have you thought about putting together emergency cash? You know, what does that look like for you? So we work our way up to. Um, and short-term goals. Maybe right. it's to to uh, invest some money or let it work for you until you're ready to buy a home. Right. So you need to build up a little bit of equity for down payment. Which you can always call me and I'll help you with the home buying. Well, there you go. There, there you go. go. Um, well, we're about to come up and get a break and then we'll continue talking about that process, the planning, and then what you guys go through on the front end in order to understand and, like you said, listen to the customer and see what they really want. Now, if you guys are looking to buy or sell a home, you can always give me a call at 256-708-1511. We're so thankful with your dollars making sense. We've got lots of great sponsors out there. Uh, Jacob Title with Jamie Blanton, they do a great job for us with all our real estate um, transactions and things like that. Uh, we've got 412 Public House, Anytime Fitness. We've got, I think, almost 10 sponsors now that are really... Uh, excited about investing in the community because that's what they do on a daily basis. They want you to succeed. They want you to excel. Use their products and services and all of us work together for to get to that better place.
This is the Your Dollars Making Sense podcast, brought to you by Jamie Blanton with Jacob Title, Bales Property Management and Home Building, SHH Mechanical, Boyle's Tax Service, Coleman Appliance Repair, 412 Pub House, Anytime Fitness, and Cotton Home Inspections. Welcome back to Your Dollars Making Sense. I'm the host, Richard Neese. We appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in, whether it's on WKUL 92.1, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, you know, all the places we put it out there, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Thank you guys so much. Uh, If this is the first time you've listened in, uh, we want to really stress that the point of the show is to increase your financial intelligence. We want to compare different types of investing If you're looking to start a business, if you're looking to start a 401k, if you want to invest in real estate, we're trying to give you the knowledge to help you do that in an easier way, a better way, and provide the experts for that. And we've got an expert on here today, Chris Mann with Edward Jones. Thanks for staying up for the second segment. I didn't run you off, so that's always a good thing. Oh, thanks. Glad to be here. So we were talking in the last segment about um, the process when they call you, they walk in the door, they're, they're wanting help with financial planning, financial advising. We got to the point of setting goals, and then I'll just I'll let you kind of pick up from there. Okay. So once once we get some basic information, then we're able to to look into say um, how do we add value specifically. Uh, so we talk about account types, uh, and we talk about what's a strategy if if you have if you want your money to be working for you, do you do you leave it at the bank and let it sit in a CD? Uh, do you leave it as cash because you need to get to it? Uh, is are there funds that you want to be working more long term? Right. And how do you do that? And what's the best tax advantage for that? Sure. So once we now we're getting into account types, uh, and it typically we're talking traditional IRA, could be a Roth IRA. There's for traditional the money that goes in, it's considered non-taxed, and then every bit of it is taxed once it comes out. Right. For Roth, uh, the money goes in that has been taxed. And then every bit of the of the growth is tax free, so there are no taxes on a Roth. So give give us a quick overview because I know this happens to a lot of folks. What is the difference between you just talked about Roth and, and IRA? What about a four hundred one k? How does all that tie in on the investment side? That is a great question because traditional IRA will perform as far as as far as we're talking about tax benefits similar to a four hundred one k. So the money goes in out of the 401k. It's not taxed yet. It comes out pre-tax out of your paycheck. Uh, so it's never never had any tax dollars taken out. It's able to grow that way until you retire. In theory, you're supposed to not touch it because there are penalties right. if you touch it early. Same for traditional IRA or Roth IRA. There are there are consequences uh, if you wait uh, if you don't wait beyond 59 and a half. Um, now there's also just a plain taxable account. That's just a brokerage account where there are no strings attached as far as, but the, the, what does come with that are if there are capital gains, if there are, if there is interest that is earned, then you settle on that, uh, each calendar year. If you do sell, then you generate capital gains. So on that, and I'll dive into that piece of it. What about, I've heard about like drip campaign and stuff like that. And I'm not talking about marketing, the dividend reinvestment programs. Uh, if I make profit, if I make a, a capital gain off of that and I reinvest it, how, how is that viewed by the tax man? Do you know? Uh, well, we have, when we get too far into taxes, our standard answer is you better talk to your tax professional. That's right. Because I am not a tax professional. That's right. Um, but we do give information. You guys are great at increasing the, the wealth, the value, but if you want to protect it, that's another asset. Uh, you want to make sure you have a good accountant. No, we're sm- we want to be smart about it. Sure. We're not going to just give you blind advice exactly. on, and that's going to put you into uh, some sort of ta- tax consequence that you weren't expecting. Right. We're, we're going to do our best to talk about that, but we're always going to say, Check with your guy. Right. Check with your accountant because what we're you know we can give you a certain amount of information, but every one situation is unique. Uh, but in general, we can guide you as far as when capital gains. You know, sure. if it's going to be long term or short term, we collect data on that. So we've got the information that you need to give to your tax professional. Right. Now, the good part about that account that you're talking about is that um, usually within a couple of days, you could cash out and have that money available. Is that right? That's right. Uh, and that's a great thing. You know, we talk about real estate all the time in here. Uh, there's two things about real estate. Real estate's a great investment because it's not liquid. 
And it's also a bad investment because it's not liquid. So there's pros and cons to not being able to access your money. Obviously, you can't just pull it out at any time. Uh, but in situations like you were talking about a 401k, I actually left the sheriff's office to, to be a real estate agent full time. And everybody and their mother was telling me, don't cash out of that. Keep it just in case you come back. Well, I, I cashed out of my military and my uh, law enforcement uh, 401k. And that's what started my company, my, started my real estate company. That was all of the, the marketing dollars on the front end. I'd say the return's been much better uh, on that, but it's always uh, case specific. Obviously. Right. So you got, you've got to consider all of, the, all of the consequences and benefits of it. And that's a decision you, you have to, to, to weigh the pros sure. and cons, like you say. And, and sometimes that's the reality that you, you take a hit. That's right. And it doesn't seem like a good short term decision, but it, if it's if it's a long term plan and it works out, then that you know, that may that's be right. the path to go forward. That's right. And that's that's really the key to this show is we want to look at all investment avenues or all that we can get professionals on to talk about and say, you know, nothing is right every time. There's always a, a different way of doing things. You've got to figure out what's best for you. And that's what it comes down to. I mean you've gotta you've gotta know what's best for you. You've got to take the professional advice to make sure that you get there. Uh, so let's say that I walk in and I've got, is there a certain, I know you're talking about um, emergency funds and things like that. Is there a certain amount of money that I should have saved up like three months worth of my bills? Or, I mean, do you have an opinion on that so that we can move towards actually saving money than investing money? Yeah. You know, we talk about some common sense things and, and I, just a kind of a side note, I love it when I get a chance to talk to a young person. Uh, I spent some time in the high schools and sometimes one-on-one -on -one because Absolutely. parents will bring their kids in or young adults, let's say young yeah. adults, and talk about some of these fundamentals. Of I thought you were talking about me for a minute. <laughs> I was like, well, I haven't been called that in a little while, but thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, no, but, the, uh, but it, as far as having having an idea of budget, um, of not running up a bunch of debt, uh, and then you get to the point of having – some money, whether it's a couple of months worth of whatever your normal bills right. are, and, and, and then start putting away for yourself. But if you've got some revolving debt that, that's hanging over your head, you got to get that stuff taken care of. And consumer debt is the worst. I mean, it's it's never going to go away. And what I see all the time is folks will um, they'll, they'll refinance, and they'll consolidate debt just to run up the credit card again. You know, let's, let's look at some discipline like you were talking about. I know you're a pretty disciplined guy, not only financially. I see you in the gym all the time as far as the picks go. So that's, that's something that's important, too. You've got to have the discipline on the front end because otherwise you're just going to spend money everywhere and you're not going to have that long-term plan because it, it takes days, months, years in order to build this, this wealth that you're talking about. And the serious long-term investor is not a specific age. You know, typically we're, we're talking to folks who are – well along in their career, but I talked to plenty of folks that are just getting started. Sure. And there's nothing wrong with, with setting these plans and having big goals early on. Now, goals are like, like anything else in life. Maybe you have to reevaluate every Absolutely. once in a while, yeah. uh, but at least you have something. You have a starting point. Absolutely. Uh, and that's where, uh, and that's a big point that on, on our emphasis with as far as who comes into our office and what the expectations are. It's not a cookie cutter. It's not just a, a, a format that we follow. We really are looking for where's the values for you specifically. Sure. And that's got to always... Tailor-made. Right? That's right. It's always going to be a little different. There's always going to be something that that's more important to you than the other person or the next person. And then they're based on where you are in life. There might be a little bit different strategy to take. Absolutely. Uh, and, and then that will evolve. So we're, we're, wanna, we're kind of partnering with you. We're looking to... I like the way you put that, partnering with you. So we're coming up against the second break. I'd like to continue that on, and I'm going to tell a story, too, about a young person that reached out to me. Uh, so, so we'll kind of roll into that on the next one. We're also going to talk about stocks and bonds and more, a little bit more technical stuff so people have a better understanding of that. This is the Your Dollars Making Sense podcast, brought to you by Jamie Blanton with Jacob Title, Bales Property Management and Home Building, SHH Mechanical, Boyle's Tax Service, Coleman Appliance Repair, 412 Pub House, Anytime Fitness, and Cotton Home Inspections. Hey everybody, Richard and Nice here. Welcome back to the third and final segment of Your Dollars Making Sense, where we believe financial intelligence is the key to financial freedom. We've got Chris Mann here, and he is he's dropping some bombs for us. He's giving us a great foundation as far as uh, financial planning, different vehicles, things like that. 
Uh, but I do have to tell a quick story. It won't take but probably 30 seconds, you know, three minutes, something like that. I had a, a person, a young person asked me, you're talking about wanting to help more young people. And they asked me, what do I need to do to start investing? I, I, I get this about once a week, like I said. And I tell them, listen to the podcast. And, and the great thing about uh, young folks is they typically don't have a ton of debt. Um, they're, they're about to get into that phase. This, this person, was, she was 21. And she'd asked me about it. And I said, well, the first thing you need to do is you need to have as little debt as possible. And you start looking at how you can make your dollars work for you, that your dollars making sense. That's the whole show. Uh, and then I said, when you listen to the podcast, you'll find out what you feel best about as far as risk and tolerance goes. And that's the most important thing. So uh, it's, it's always great when you have feedback from the show and, you know, it's, you don't know where it's going to be at. Somebody says, hey, you're, you're the radio guy or you have that show or I watch you on Facebook or something like that. So. Chris, I appreciate you coming up with the third segment. Sure. Let's talk a little bit about the volatility or uh, the state of the market. Okay. And what does that even mean, the market? Everybody talks about the market. Right. So uh, there, uh, I'll start with, with one comment. So there's two distinct folks who are interested in that. There's traders and there's investors. Now, a trader is very concerned about minute so, by minute. So do you mean speculators? That's really what you mean. Yeah. yeah okay. You okay. yeah, yeah, call it what it is on here. Yeah. I don't mind. <laughs> well, I mean, you're, you're, um, you're looking to time the market. That's right. Um, and that's okay. People do that. And there's a lot of folks that, that do well with that. I was not one of those people at one time. We'll talk about that later. Maybe off there. Most people are not yep. good at that. Usually you're one step behind. Yep. The whole idea is buy low. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, buy low and sell high. That's right. Um, and if you're off step with that, even uh, I, I say even you are a long term investor and you panic a little bit, and the market starts to go down, and you say, "All right, I just I want out. Just put me in cash." Well, the risk of that is that the market goes back up. That's right. And you're sitting in cash. So what you'll end up doing is you sold low, and then you decide you want to and come back, and then you're going to buy high. That's right. That happens, but you want to avoid that. And the best way to avoid that is to think long term. But if there are good reasons to do that or transition to a different type of investment, then that's what we do. We just want to make a good decision on that. Absolutely. So you're talking, uh, and lots of folks may be familiar with real estate term, or not real estate, stock market terms. Uh, you're talking about buying stocks, or are you talking about buying um, uh, different annuities? I mean, what, what are you talking about as far as cashing out of? Well, that's that's a good point. Now, it, I'm traditionally talking about stocks because that's going to be the most volatile or the right. most questionable as far as risk goes. But we're, but we're also, we're not just talking about stocks. I mean, it, it, it's not just stocks or cash. There are bonds. There could be tax-free municipal bonds. Uh, there could be corporate bonds. So how do I find these tax-free things? That's what I need to find. Well, we can talk about that later. Go ahead. Keep going through your stuff. So there's also, we are actually also have a, a, a good list of CDs. Now, we're competitive because we're able to look and partner with banks across the country and find great the best CD rates we can. Now, relatively speaking, because CD rates are down, yeah. the feds are actually going to be announcing today. So all this news type that's, that's been, there's been a lot of volatility. A lot of it's headline driven. Uh, the bond market is affected when the feds talk, um, when there are issues that are related to Saudi Arabia being having their right. oil field um, damaged or, or attacked. You know, that's going to impact sure. the market, of course. So there's a lot of these headline driven impacts that are short term and then cooler heads prevail. And traditionally, the market does what it does. Uh, when you when you look at uh, the major points back in history, when when the market has seen significant recession, um, you know, sometimes it takes a couple of years for it to come back. Sure. Last year was a great example of a slight dip, not a, not a huge recession, right. but most people were down a few percent, but they've more than made that up because the market's been very strong for, um, this year. So if I'm, I'm looking to invest, uh, I don't know what to invest in, and, and I give you a call. Well, first off, how do I get a hold of you to set up this appointment? Okay, so my phone number uh, is 256-775-9722. All right, so I'm a millennial. I don't want to make a call. How else do I get a hold of you? Well, chris.man at edwardjones.com. Just shoot me an email. Uh, if you search for me, you'll find me on LinkedIn. You'll find me on um, Facebook. Uh, and, and actually, I have there's a website. But if you if you search for Chris Mann and Edward okay. Jones, it'll be there. 
and they can just direct message you or something like yep. that if they wanted to use that platform. Yep. Uh, and and what kind of lead time or what kind of prep time do I need to have on uh, calling and meeting with you or, or messaging? I mean, is it a week in advance to get all the stuff together or is it, can I do it the same day or what, what kind of range do you have? When uh, it's it's common for it to be within a couple of days. Okay. Um, I, I do same day when, I, when I'm able sure, to. Absolutely, absolutely. If my calendar is open um, and there's something I can do to help you, I'm going to do my best to, to make some time for you. Well, Chris, you got to promise me something. You're going to come back on because I've got about 37 questions over here that I should <laughs> ask you. Um, but I'd like for you to come back on and talk. I'd really like to talk about the CDs and, and shopping those out. Um, I'm with several nonprofits, and we're always looking for ways to maximize our returns um, in a safe way, obviously, with a CD or something like that. So we'll talk about that a little bit after the break. Thank you so much for coming on. Tell them one more time how to get a hold of you. Uh, phone number? 256-775-9722. And a physical address, actually, is 117 Fifth Street Southeast. Uh, just just east of the courthouse. And that, that's in Coleman if you guys are listening to us outside of the Coleman County area. Thank you so much for coming on, Chris. Thank you guys for listening to Your Dollars Making Sense. We truly believe that financial intelligence is the key to financial freedom, and that's why we bring uh, special guests like Chris on uh, weekly to, to help you build that foundation so that you can make smart financial decisions. We hope you have a great Saturday.